Good, good afternoon. My name is Kirk Brown. I'm the Chief of the Asian Strikes for the City of Rocky Mount. Today you'll be hearing from Police Chief Robert Hassel. He's going to provide an update on the shooting that we had this morning, um, an arrest in a recent homicide, and some other initiatives that we are introducing to uh, combat violent crime. Chief Hassel. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I need to spell my name or anything. Everybody good? Go ahead and spell it. I'll do that. Robert Hassel, first name Robert, R O V E R T. Last name Hassel, H A S S E L L, Chief of Police for the City of Rocky Mount. Um, before I start, I would like to just mention my executive staff who is attending with me today. Um, my commander or captain over the investigative division, Captain Staten. My executive captain over our support services division, Captain Ballard. My captain, division commander over patrol, Captain Williams. My captain over administration, or interim captain, um, Mr. Fagans. Um, and then with them is two of my commanders within the divisions. Um, today, as all of you already know, there was another shooting resulting in someone getting injured at the early morning hours around 3 a.m. An unknown subject fired uh, multiple rounds into a home, wounding an innocent nine-year-old boy who was just asleep in his bed. This child was taken to Biden Hospital in Greenville, and at this moment the latest update is that he is expected to recover. The child was not the intended target. We do believe um, in initial investigations, uh, or in initial phases of this investigation, believe this was a, a suspected gang-related type shooting, and it is still being investigated by our major crimes uh, unit within the Rocky Mountain Police Department. With that, I will say to everyone who's watching that the violence must stop. You know, over the last several days, I've heard from many some citizens, community organizations and groups with a lot of things, a lot of ideas, great things that's gonna help our community. And I look forward to hearing those suggestions, those ideas as we move forward to provide the much needed resources within the community to help deal with the violence that we're seeing here in our city over the last few weeks. Uh, next, I'm announcing that, well, let me go back. On May 5th, 2022, off of Sunset Avenue on Stone Road Drive, the victim in the case was a 20-year-old, um, Devonte Crandall, who was fatally shot while in the passenger seat of a vehicle. The sedan was, the driver of that sedan or vehicle was also injured in that shooting. Today I'm announcing that 19-year-old Antonius Montez Clemens Jr. Um, was turned himself in to our homicide unit. And he was today charged with first-degree murder and attempted first-degree murder. He has been held at the Nash County Pursuit Center with no bond. I want to announce also today that due to the increase or the number of incidents that we've had over the last several weeks, the violent crime, that my staff and I last week had developed a plan of action in response to that. Today I've had the opportunity to meet with a, the division heads or department heads of multiple agencies within Nash County and Edgecombe County, meeting with some of our state partners, our patrol, ALE, probation and parole and others um, in forming a multi-agent agency type task force. This task force is going to be focused using data from our crime analyst unit, identifying the high, uh, location where we're experiencing higher levels of crime. And this, these units, or this unit, will be focused on those areas with concentrated and saturated patrols in our effort to reduce more violence in our city. I 
also would like to announce that through the support of our city council, my city manager for the city of Rocky Mount, that we're moving forward with two technology initiatives within the department in our effort to combat um, crime. First, our Fuchsia's platform with our real-time um, intelligence center. We're moving forward with partnering with our local businesses within the city in the hopes that they will partner with us, allowing us to connect their video camera systems at their business that point towards parking lots and public streets and highways. So that way, in the midst of a crime, that that video feed will be directly funneled into our real-time intelligence center, which will allow our officers to have real-time information, video information, directly while they're responding to the scene in the hopes that that video feed will allow us to identify those who are partaking in these crimes at that moment, but also have access to the video feeds and looking at historical data where we can obtain any um, video evidence that will help us in prosecuting these individuals. Second, we're looking at expanding our license plate reader network within the city of Rocky Mountain. We're increasing our network to add an additional 16 um, license plate readers through a variety of locations within the city, which will be identified through our crime um, analyst team who will help us identify the most needed locations for those new license plate readers. We believe both of these new pieces of technology and expansion of one, or I would say an expansion of both, will assist the Rocky Mountain Police Department in our efforts to hopefully bring about more calm, but especially and identifying those who are partaking in these incidents and bringing them to justice. Um, at this time, I will entertain any questions that any of you may have. Chief, Tim with ABC 11, if the child was not the intended target, who was the intended target in that home? Well, the best was during the initial phase of this investigation, and there were, we're not at the point where we're going to release that information. But someone in the home was the intended target? That is, what, that is what we were suspecting, yes. Who would the child be and I turn back to I know the family is with the with the child at the hospital. I can't advise when the child will be released, but I know the family is there. I just stepped in, did I just hear that y'all caught the suspect in the Sunset Avenue Thompson? Um yes we did. Um, the suspect in that case, um, Antonius Montez Clinton um, Jr. turned himself into the Rocky Mountain Police Department homicide unit. Is there a bond set on him? There is no bond. He has been turned over to uh, the Nash uh, County Detention Center with no bond. Is he the one suspect or are any other suspects? At this time, he is the only suspect. Uh, but as always, an investigation still continues even after the arrest. Can you say the motive has been ascertained or been exploded? No, sir. I don't have that at this time. He's the only one? Yes, sir. When it comes to the new tech, um, how much does that cost? Is it going to have an additional cost? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sorry about that. Um, for the cameras, um, the city um, last year had already put the initial calls in implementing that technology within the Rocky Mountain. We increased the number of Rocky Mountain Police Departments in all four of our patrol districts throughout the city. But this now multi-agency, um, including our local and our state partners, that will only increase our numbers um, within the city. I know there's been great effort to catch the shooters there. Has there been any effort to see where all these guns are coming from? Um, because the guns are coming from somewhere. Has there been any attention towards where the guns are coming from? Yes, ma'am, it has. Um, I have been had multiple, I've had multiple conversations with uh, U.S. Uh, District Attorney uh, Michael Easley, Jr. Um, so we are looking forward to an announcement on that. We have always had a strong partnership with um, Alcohol, Tobacco, Fall, um, ATF. So we have our task force officers assigned with ATF um, teams, and we are constantly investigating um, incidents and crimes in, uh, related to illegal gun purchases, straw purchases, and illegal guns on our streets here in the city. So yes, ma'am, um, a lot of emphasis have been put in there, and hopefully we're going to do even more emphasis on that. No, 
coming out. It's a multi-agency task force, which includes Nash County Sheriff's Office, Edgecombe County Sheriff's Office, ALE, Highway Patrol, Probation and Parole, Na Nashville, Tarboro, um, Pineville, all of our local police departments, sheriff departments, our state partners here in the area all have committed to join in with our efforts on this multi-agency task force. That, that was Pine Tops, right? Not Pine Tops. Pine tops. That's the way I live at, so I want to make sure you get it right. Chief. <laughs> uh, I hope you're Chief. On the shooting this morning, I believe you have a suspect, so I'll take it to the suspect this time. In reference to the nine year old, um, at this time, we haven't developed. Nobody's been arrested. No, sir, no one's been arrested. We're still falling down some information on that, but we haven't identified the suspect. And just recap on Sunset, two questions. Can y'all get it to him at the time the suspect turned himself in? And was a firearm ever recovered in the case? I can get that to you in a second. And is the lady that was killed on, uh, in Happy Hill area, there was no arrest on that one yet? The one that was on Saturday night down here? Yeah. Middle, middle Street. No, so it's still at large on that one. Still asking for We're still we still active investigating. Still need public help on that. Always, yes. Yeah. Were there any other updates on any of the recent cases that we haven't heard about yet or anything new? I know we still have King, I think we had pretty solid because the suspects there. Is there anybody else on that one that are looking for, for example, or yep. any other cases you all looking for somebody else as a suspect? On all the other cases, yeah. uh, we will send out a press release. I'm not prepared to comment on those at this time, but we will definitely get out any updates on any other cases. But if there is a particular question on any previous case, I uh, will ask anyone here to please just submit that to our public information officer or the city's public information officer, and we would be more than happy to respond to those individuals. Thank you. One more quick question. What did you think of the comments last night from the speakers? I know there were a lot of comments. I know Ms. Copeland, for example, mentioned substations, for example. They're open. Did you kind of keep a running list in your head of the, the feedback you were getting, and did you hear or see anything that stood out to you from the comments last night from the citizens? You know, what I heard from the citizens last night is that we have a community, we have a city, whereas many of our organizations and city groups, different organizations, civic groups have identified other issues that may be contributing to some of the issues we're seeing in our city. And that they're willing to work together, come together, come up with solutions to help um, identify and, and mitigate those underlying issues that may be driving violent crime in our city. Some of the ideas and suggestions, of course, I did hear those about substations and things. Um, those are always on my uh, option, real, I guess you want to say, for consideration. Mm -hmm. Can you talk Chief, about staffing, was... including vacancies? Ma'am? Can you talk about staffing, including vacancies, if there are any right now within the department? Well, yes, ma'am. I can't think of no police department in the state of North Carolina. I don't have any vacancies. <laughs> we do have some vacancies within the Rocky Mountain Police Department, um, but it hasn't affected where we can't effectively patrol the city streets here in the city. How many? Ma'am, Do I don't have, have that number right here in front of me. I'm sorry for that. I wasn't prepared for that at this point. Chief, specifically, where was the nine-year-old shot, and did you have an emotional reaction when you found out? It was around three-ish, right after when it occurred. I got that uh, text message. Uh, you know, everyone knows that, you know, this has really troubled many citizens within our city. It's of concern. It's a great concern of myself, my staff, the men and women who are serving on the streets of our city each and every day. Um, when I got notified from the on-duty commander, which is actually standing in the back of the room, um, as, as soon as I got the briefing and update on that, I responded to that location. Immediately knowing that a nine-year-old was definitely an unintended target, but no matter, a nine-year-old was shot while sleeping in his bed in his bedroom. Um, it does make you think about your own family. You think about friends. Um, so it's very concerning, which is why I've made it very clear that I'm happy. I'm very proud to know that our citizens, our different groups are working together to try to come up with solutions. They feel will help us resolve this. They support, I feel, I heard last night, a great number of support, a much support for our police department. But it was very troubling, very troubling to hear that a nine-year-old was, was shot. Where was he shot? Um, at this time, I'm not able to reveal that. So stable at the hospital too much? Yes, sir, stable and with family at the hospital. Well, that's a close call. I could have been all the things worse, but he's still alive. Yes, thankfully not, yes. 
Chief, um, I want to thank all you guys for all that you're doing. But what I want to hear coming from the community is more community involvement. It's going to take the community to help you all. You can put any, you can put all the substations, put all the police out there. But until people uh, start talking, it is going to take longer to solve crime. So the people need to be talking about what they can do, not only what law enforcement can do, because they are there when it goes on most of the time. So I commend you guys for all that you're doing and about the state of emergency. Um, they was talking about it being symbolic. You can call it what you want to, but it's bringing about awareness. And that's what we want. I, when I was getting out of my car this morning, I came to work at five o'clock over here in Rocky Mountain. When I was getting out of my car, I seen that. And I have three children and it hurts me to have to go to work and work 10 hours and then look forward to coming to this meeting to support you guys. So I want to thank y'all again for all that you're doing. You, know, you bring up a good point, you know, in reference to the Prophet Street shooting with the nine-year-old getting shot. Um, in this case and in other cases, you know, there are individuals within our community who have information. Correct. I really need those individuals to have information about this case on Prophet Street or any other case that we may be investigating. If you have information, we implore you to please contact our major crimes unit, our homicide unit, or even the Twin City Crime Stoppers line to make sure that you get that information, whatever avenue it may be, including our fighting crimes um, network on Facebook. If, no matter how you get it to us, get that information to us. So that way our investigators will be able to take that information and compare it with all the evidence we already have. And hopefully that may be the piece of information that we may need to bring the particular investigation to a close and hopefully bringing that individual who may have committed a crime to justice. Chief, in regards to the state of emergency, do you know if there's going to be any more curfews in place? And if so, what are the police uh, going to do to enforce it? Well, I know our mayor is here to possibly make a comment a little later. Uh, but we're looking at all our options that's um, available to us in city ordinances uh, and making sure that we enforce those we feel will be proactive in dealing with the issues at hand. So when you went to the scene of the shooting, was there people there? Or was there virtually no one out there? And did the neighbor put, get, get a sort of sense of awareness that something happened? You got there, was there a crowd of people? Or could you tell what, can you kind of describe what it was like when you got there? Well, of course, um, the, the Rocky Mountain Police Department was on scene. Uh, by the time I arrived, you know, my guys being the first responders there, police officers, they assisted in rendering aid. But the young, the, the child had already been transported to the hospital by the time I arrived. And it was just my officers, my um, major crime team was on scene, my crime scene technicians was on scene processing it. But I did not see uh, there was no one else there. How long were you on the scene? You have an idea when you cleared out? I was there for well over an hour at the scene. Um, my staff was there much longer than that. So they were there through the morning? Um, yes, I'm not exactly sure when they came. So they were there for a while? Yes, sir. Thank you. I mean, of course, as you know, um, I have a great number of very experienced and knowledgeable staff of all my major units within the department. My crime team techs, they take their job very seriously and do a very thorough job in processing any crime scene they're called out to. Um, so that takes time because we want to make sure that we get it right. Um, so that way we have a strong case when we present to our district attorney's office. Two more, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, one more question. Uh, I know that it may be more of a mere thing, but does Rocky Mount have any uh, plan in place to maybe further uh, crime watch or community watch? Uh, something that they can do to help train citizens and how they can spot out such suspects and how they can report them or anything of that sort? Um, and I, through our human relations um, department, Mr. Archie Jones is our human relations director. We have a very strong relationship with multiple um, neighborhood associations throughout the, our city. I want to say 16 plus active associations. Don't hold me to that number. Um, they meet on a regular basis. I have an upcoming meeting um, with Mr. Jones and some citizens coming from the near future. We're always there to make sure we share any kind of information, uh, updates, and tips that may, they may pass on to the members of their community that will help us with any incident. I have a question, and it's similar to his. We interviewed a guy who's from the streets, who you know had a record, 
turn his life around. He's tired of the gun violence. And he wants to partner with police and the city. In the city of Durham, they have violence interrupters that they have on staff. They go into at-risk communities and talk to some of these people before you know violence erupts. Is this something that you guys are considering, talking about, budgeting for? Um, I, I know of the violent interrupter program and initiatives in many other cities around our country. Um, I have looked at that, I have studied that. I have all options on the table. When I'm looking at new initiatives and strategies to bring to our city that um, I feel will help address some of the violent issues, I, I'm looking at it, I'm studying it. Um, so that is a program I have more, I'm aware of. Um, is it an option? Yes, it's an option. But at this time, um, we haven't decided that that's something we're going to I was in a meeting Sunday night and we brought that up. And matter of fact, the people from Durham was on the call that does that. So they are going to come to the city and make a presentation. Do we have gangs in Rocky Mountain? Yes, ma'am, we do. Do we have, well, we have gangs, so that's a problem. Yes. And some of these, I mean, that has never been something I've shied away from. Um, some of these incidents I reported in our last press conference, they are, just kind of like the one this morning, we think it's gang related. Yes. Have there been suspects that we've arrested involved in some of these activities? Yes, it has. Um, so that's nothing that we shy away from. We have a violent crime and gang unit that addresses our gang issues in our city. Um, so do we have gangs? Yes. Do we have gang members? Yes, we do. Do we have specialized teams that address those gang problems in our city? We do. And this new collaboration, we're going to hopefully strengthen our strategies and efforts in dealing with that problem. Can you please spell Clemens, the 19-year-old that's been we, we have a press release. We do. Okay. Fantastic. Yes, they're going to pass all the updated press release to everybody. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you all again. We have press releases. We're passing them out right now. Thank you. Thank you all.